This is Envision Self Healing Podcast, episode number 25. Hi, I'm Will Fuller. And I'm Richard Miller. And we are the co creators of EnvisionSelfHealing.com and are dedicated in helping you improve your eyesight and quality of life by taking healing into your own hands. The topic of the week this week is eating your way to better vision. And in the second half of the podcast, we're going to answer a question from one of our audience that says, I see better at night with my periphery. Why is that? So Richard, how's the world of self-healing been treating you this week? Well, as uh, as people may have realized, I've been remodeling my house over the last month, a month and a half now. Yeah, yeah. I think and the pictures of your doorknobs should uh, <laughs> be up on Facebook by now. By now, yes. <laughs> and um, and I moved in last, I don't know, was it last two? I don't know. I moved in somewhere in here. It was yeah. like a five or six day push to move in, pack up, move everything over, get unpacked, which I haven't completely done. <laughs> And we, uh, we are surrounded by boxes just right now. Yeah, we're, we, every th- time we need something for the podcast, we, we have to open <laughs> a box and see where it is. Yeah. So, um, so and I've been trying to reestablish my eye exercise routine mm-hmm. uh, slowly. Yeah, and it's, it's quite a good example because they say moving is probably one of the most stressful things yeah. you can do. So it would be interesting to observe your uh, behavioral patterns over the next uh, couple yeah. of weeks and see how you reintroduce the exercises. Right. So one one very positive thing, though, is I moved. I mean, I actually had a pretty good view from my deck from the previous place. Mm-hmm. But now I have a view about half a block away right. where looking out towards the Bay Bridge and uh, the you can see all the way to the East Bay, all yeah. the way to o- Oakland. And, it's an amazing view. Yeah. And you, you've, you've got a picture of it, did you? I did take a picture this morning, yeah. So we're uh, we'll stick that up on our on our Facebook fan page so everyone can be jealous to see uh, see what a good view we've got. Well, and the other thing you should be jealous about, Will should be jealous, except he's moving actually. But uh, the, you could see the fog creeping in from from the ocean, <laughs> yeah. like, and my place is still sunny. You'll see that in the picture. Yeah. The fog so, is creeping it's in. It's like a fog fault line. It is, yeah. <laughs> so that's it. for those of you who don't know San Francisco. It's a summer is some sometimes the worst weather. Because of the fog, yeah. and where you live is strategically important in terms of the fog. So yeah, and Rich is just on that line. You can just sort of uh, he just gets the sunshine. Exactly. Of course, there's a fault line below my house, probably too. But that's okay. We get used to that. So that's mainly what I've been doing and trying to just get myself. Uh, oh, the eating has been. It, so you totally inspired me last week with the, all the talks yeah. about nutrition. I try. Yep. And uh, so I did some more juicing this week, but not enough. No. And uh, but it's a start. It is a start. And I did feel really good the time that you were over and we juiced. Yeah, we, we found a secret recipe. Didn't oh, we? that's right. Yeah, that's we amazing. had a. We had, uh, well, I do carrots and beets. Yeah, and Be- we've, we found a moldy peach on the side. That's right. And we just. We, <laughs> and we so peel- get rid of this. Yeah. And so we peeled the mold off. Maybe it was the mold was the, really the secret <laughs> yeah, ingredient. Secret I don't ingredient. know. That's how we found antibiotics. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. We started seeing visions, not uh, <laughs> yeah, vision. Yeah. Um, but it somehow it took the edge off the beets, right? Yeah, it, yeah. It almost had a coconut flavor. It was yeah, amazing. Yeah. We're all, uh, we should paint in it and, uh, and sell it. Yeah. No, I, beets, I, I like to do beets because they increase my blood circulation. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's the thing I discovered on when I did that juice fast is that beets were really good for my eyes for yeah. blood circulation. And I did the carrots because I like the, the way carrots taste and they're good for you. So Yeah, and we're going to talk a little bit later on how they're full of beta carotene for the vitamin A's, but we, uh, we save that until the topic. We right. don't want to get into it too much now. So, but any of you who find beet juice too astringent... A little bit of moldy peach. Goes <laughs> <laughs> a long way. <laughs> Do take the mold off. Yeah, take the mold off. Yeah. I think it's important it gets moldy first, though, yeah. before. Yes, yeah. uh, unless you want some penicillin, <laughs> in which case you're fine. Yeah. Also, I found that if it's a little, uh, and again, we're going to talk about this in next week podcast when we're going to talk about juicing and uh, and smoothies. But I also find adding things like um, cucumbers or celery sort of waters it down a little bit if you find it a little bit too. Uh, course yeah, yeah. Um, so but what about we uh we also 
had a good uh, salad as well, didn't we? That's right. That's uh, right. We had a very week. good salad, yeah. And uh, we got a picture of that as well. So we, we'll stick that up. I hope right. you remember all these photos. I well. know. <laughs> but but on the other hand, yesterday I was on the run. I can't remember what I was doing. I had some house decision to make from 7 to 8.30. Yeah. And then I had to run off to my... Running off to meditation, right? Yeah. And uh, that day consisted of a donut, a hot dog, because <laughs> that was what was at the BART station was a donut and a hot dog. Yeah, I'm glad we're, we're really setting an example here. With, uh, well, with the, you have to be. Well, and maybe that's, I'm setting the example of get little baggies and take things with you if you, if you don't have time. Yeah. Obviously, I didn't do it, but. <laughs> yeah, when I, uh, one thing I find helps is, is pre-making the, the salad. Yeah. And just sort of, you could, or especially the lettuce, you can just take that out and just chop up a little you, you wouldn't do that anyway would you no i might <laughs> i might i might yeah. or sometimes when i make a salad i make two and okay. then i leave it in the fridge so stick it in a in an airtight container okay and then at any point you can just dip in and and eat it but you will notice those of you that see the pictures you'll notice a big bowl and a smaller bowl like yeah. a baby bowl and a mummy bowl <laughs> <laughs> and um, I have salad intolerance. There's a point where I just can't <laughs> yeah. eat any more salad. Um, and the reason for my for the the larger one is is for me, and that's because over the last year or two, I've been playing with raw diets and different plant based diets and whatnot. And uh, when I was doing research into trying to get enough calories, I found that you had to sort of eat twice as much right. of the salads in order to get the right amount of calories. Yeah. So um, it was a little bit of an effort at first but actually i just got used to it and now a, a standard size salad for me is a serving bowl of a family of four <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah i'm definitely not hungry after one of those for like two three hours that's oh, okay. fills me up more than uh, steak and fries that's for sure mm. um so I'm really excited to hear you talk about your week because you've been telling me a little bit, and uh, it's, yeah, it's pretty it's, exciting. It's actually a bit of a bit of a celebration uh, for me this week. I'm, I was almost unsure about bringing it up because um, because it's one of those those turning points that you get in self healing where it's sort of have I have I really achieved this or am I just kidding myself? Or, right. Anyway, basically trying to build up the suspense there. I sort of had a breakthrough this week in my vision and I noticed a large portion of my periphery sort of wake up and what I can attribute it to those that have been listening to the podcast over the last few weeks and if this is your first podcast then go back and listen to the other ones and you'll understand what I'm talking about that when I describe the periphery um, instead of it being you know blind in that area it's sort of like a static right well anyway what I've noticed I, I sort of um, have changed my exercise regime a little bit over the last few weeks and uh, and last week I do remember I talked about how I was paying particular attention to my periphery when I was traveling in London and France and how it was frustrating and how it was so overwhelming with all the people and you know how difficult that was but that for some reason it seemed like my periphery had improved remember me saying that yeah, last week yeah so I stayed with it this week and also with a combination of the the diet that I've been doing, yeah, I've been um, juicing all day, every you know, throughout the day. But I've been eating as well. Again, last week I said that I was going to do sort of a juice fast, but I decided not to. I wanted to juice and eat at the same time. Right. Um, so anyway, what I've what I sort of been playing with since Monday is that I've been starting to see through the static. So it's still there. I'm not saying that the static's gone. Right. Right. I'm starting to be able to identify objects behind it and contrast behind it. Yeah. So it's almost like, um, I don't know, something that's annoying you, so you want to you wanna shy away from it. Right. Uh, like, for example, my fridge. <laughs> that's right next to me in my apartment, and I've been trying to get it replaced for the last two years now, and my landlord will refuse. So, so you're moving out instead. <laughs> I'm moving out. I can't deal with this fridge. It's just a, it's a really loud motor vibrating noise, and it, it's sort of every time the engine kicks in. Anyway, the last couple of, any time Richard spoke to me this, this past oh, week, yeah. all I've been is moaning about this fridge. It's, yeah. been, it's been really destroying me. Anyway, I noticed yesterday the fridge didn't bother me. Huh. It was because I wasn't paying attention to the noise i was busy ah, doing other stuff ah. so 
the same. I'm saying the same with my oh, vision. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. So the static is there. It's annoying you. It's right there in front of your face. You mm-hmm. can't see past it. Yeah. It's like um, when you're looking for your glasses and they're on your head. Right. Hopefully people aren't wearing their glasses anymore. <laughs> Unless they're driving. Which yeah. they should be. Um, or, you know, you're looking for a bag and it's on your back. Or you're so, you're trying to find your keys and you're in a rush. And it's just so obvious that you don't see it. So anyway, this, this static is right there. And of course, it's difficult because that means I can't see there. So it brings up emotional mm-hmm. issues. And, you know, just, just so your brain tells you you can't see. Um, and certainly one of the biggest things we learn in Brazil is, just, you know, you see with the brain, you don't see with the eyes. And we talked about how the brain switches off right. what's weak and it focus on what's strong. Right. So the last week I've been telling myself, I don't care that it's weak, yeah. that it's weak. Just keep looking anyway. Just keep looking through the static, yeah. see what's there. And it's almost like I'm starting to be rewarded for my hard uh, efforts of continuously trying to look. And it's almost like the images are still, they're, they're coming in now. Mm-hmm. And I can sort of tune in and out. I can either focus on the static, in which case I can't necessarily see objects. If I concentrate hard enough, and start questioning what is behind the static, it almost sort of tunes in like you would tune in a radio or tune in a TV. Mm-hmm. So, but it's, I mean, it's not clear, you know, if someone was standing next to me, I couldn't tell you who it was, but I could tell, start to tell you now that somebody is standing there, which is a massive. Well, and then the challenge for us who have peripheral, normal peripheral vision is to now tell you what how you're supposed to see in your periphery because it is different than your central vision. Mm. So it's, it's going to be interesting for you to go, well, I don't see that clearly. And for me to say, I don't either, <laughs> but, you, <laughs> yeah. but not having experience with it, it's, you're going to have to learn what, what you really, what is physically possible to see with your periphery. Once you are completely seeing with it, you know what I mean? Yeah. No, I, yeah. I, I noticed today I was, when I was walking here <laughs> and I realized that I need to learn to trust my periphery all over again because I'm used to looking with my central vision which is right. detail right so as I was walking down the street there was a shadow from the tree and I'm not necessarily used to seeing shadows on the floor right so my instant thought was oh it's a manhole or I'm going to trip over <laughs> oh right I don't know a lion I don't know you, just, <laughs> you know you can't see that right so you're freaking wow, out wow fight or flight is kicking in yes <laughs> yeah. so so you're tempted to use your central, central vision because yeah, you yeah. want to see detail right um, but I thought, you know what, trust, just trust. I need to start to trust the periphery right. and just walk. And I, instead of, because as the fear starts setting in, the static increase, I can't. Yeah. I thought, no, just relax. Just see what it is. How big is the object? Where is it? Um, you know, what really, what's the chances of, right. you know, a manhole in San Francisco? You know, all the, well, all the floors are pretty well paved. I sort of tuned into the, the pavement. There was no hill or nothing. And I walked and it was fine. And it made yeah. me realize that I need to start trusting yeah. my periphery. And obviously, people need to be careful with this. And things like crossing the road is, <laughs> is a little bit different. Yeah, somebody will walk into a manhole cover, right? <laughs> yeah. So I'm not, you know, disclaimer there. I'm not recommending anyone walk in their periphery. Um, use your central vision, what you use best. Yeah. But for me personally, um, I'm finding that I need to start to learn to trust it. And in particular, one thing, because I sort of double guessed myself all this week this has been like the last five days now I've been experiencing this and it's been a real weird um I, don't, I can't even necessarily describe but I'm yeah. still in the middle of it but sort of this this waking up of the periphery which ironic I didn't wake up at all it was already there right I'm learning to see through the fuzzy areas right which I think is important to distinguish because I'm not necessarily waking in it well I'm making it up in my mind but it was always there you're you're interpreting the stack you're taking the effort to interpret the static into, into objects yeah yeah so I'm so I'm I'm combining the exercises with the brain mm-hmm. um and I really think this last week with my push-in diet sort of I almost feel like it's cleaned my blood out it's sort of given my body enough nutrients it's given me enough energy enough mental capacity that when I'm trying to see in the periphery, it's not frustrating. Um, I can stay with it and, and work with it as an exercise. Uh-huh. And when I do that, it starts to tune in. And uh-huh. a, another example of the fear is I was walking down the street uh, yesterday, heading to work, and um, I saw a couple of kids right. as I was walking down the street. I could hear a family. 
So initially, response is anxiety. Right, I don't gonna, want to walk into any kids. They're, they're going to run under me, yeah. Yeah, I don't want a lawsuit or anything. Yeah. Anyway, so I automatically went to use my central vision to shift on all these people, right. see where the children are, sort of yep. stress and try and navigate around them. Instead, I thought, you know what, I'm just going to use my periphery. So I tuned into the periphery. Sure enough, I could see a, a group, a family standing there uh-huh. and I could even make out the height of the child the floor wow. I could I could place myself mm-hmm. I knew there where the I knew where the floor was I knew where they were I knew where the shop was on my on the right of me I could put myself in the space great and I saw they were there and I thought okay I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go if I hit a child <laughs> no, I'm joking I thought <laughs> I'm just gonna you know just confidence in myself and I walked, I walked around the whole family, and it was wow. and it was fine. I didn't realize they were, you know, they were standing next to a, a taco van or uh, a van. Oh, you know? okay. And right. I didn't, I didn't know that, but I could identify the family, which is something I wouldn't have seen before. Right. Um, so yeah, so I mean, certainly I could, I could talk about this until the, the cows go home. Yeah. Because I've, I've really spent this whole week figuring out what's been going on, and my change in exercises that I've been doing that brought this on. Um, and also work on on how the brain works and how it adapts to new environments and it's there's there's really quite a bit that I feel has gone into this but it's something that we're I guess we're trying verbalize and over the next few weeks once we've processed it we can start sharing it with uh, yeah we break it down so that it's easier for everybody to understand well, I would guess, you know, at one point we talked about the what and the where system in, a, in one of our podcasts. And mm-hmm. I think, and there are different pathways within the brain that that, that visual information is being processed. Yeah. And the what is your central vision and the where is your peripheral vision. And it does seem like you're really using an entirely new pathway in your brain, really. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's not surprising that it's so dramatic, really. Yeah, and I can also feel my, I can physically feel my eyes. Yeah using more there's more work going uh-huh. on there yeah and i can even feel the muscles in my forehead and uh, cheeks sort of l- trying to open my eyes more trying yeah. to make him take in more information and it's interesting because before i would have said oh, whatever but i you know we know that if someone has poorer vision in one eye that eye tends to start to close right right um so i'm doing the opposite and my eyes are starting to yeah to open and wow. um, I can actually feel the muscles working to try and open my eyes to take in more. I'm not blinking half as much as I should be because I'm well, so excited yeah, about yeah, this. Yeah. Big <laughs> He's I, very excited this week too. I can tell. I can attest to that. I was so excited earlier that uh, I was I was in peripheral world and I walked straight past <laughs> Richard Street. I must have gone two, three blocks away <laughs> until I hit this massive hill, and I, thought, I don't remember this big hill. Um, but I was definitely off in uh, in La La Land. Yeah. But uh, I did. I did get a picture. I took a picture of. Um, of the bus to show the exercise that I do on the bus where I look forwards and I use the the movement movement in the right hand side. So check out the Facebook fan page and you'll see there because that really, that really seems to help because I can, right. I almost have to go into a state of daydream and it allows my central vision to switch off and my periphery Mm -hmm. to wake up. So I'm still working with that. And I also feel like the eyes are diverging a little bit. Which oh, makes sense because you yeah. converge to focus within twenty feet. So it's almost like when I slightly diverge, I see more periphery around me. You know, this is a long topic, but maybe you're explaining why my eyes are slightly diverged, and yeah, why I'm it's... such a daydreamer. <laughs> <laughs> so it's interesting because it means that Richard needs to do the complete opposite. opposite exactly, you need to switch off your periphery. That's probably focus true. Focus on the central. Trip over some way. kids, maybe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so anyway, very. Uh, I'm really excited to be able to share this this week, especially after uh, I had quite, you know, it was quite tough uh, when you go through the rough patches of being frustrated with yeah. your vision. And it was almost like I hit a point where it was like, okay, I'm just going to give up on these exercises. These are rubbish. Yeah. And it was almost like I was being rewarded for pushing through. through. Yeah. And I sort of went through the, the weakness. I went through the static and... Lo, lo and behold, behind it was was vision. So wow, very, uh, that's very exciting. So let's just hope next week it doesn't all undo <laughs> itself, um, and it was all just a dream. Yeah. But um, anyway, very interesting stuff there, and I'm um, you know um, some exciting things, and hopefully next week 
Who knows? I really don't know because it really yeah. caught me off guard. I wasn't expecting it at all. Yeah, right. So I'm going to keep going with the exercises and the diet. I'm definitely going to keep up my diet this week and see what happens. Good. So I think that's about a good time to move on to topic of the week. And the topic of the week this week is eating your way to better vision. So certainly a testament to this is, is I guess, the past week of my vision improvement. It's true. And, um, I mean, you can't say strictly that it was uh, was the diet because, you know, I was playing with different eye exercises and, and such. But certainly what I did is um, cut out caffeine, cut out alcohol. Mm-hmm. Uh, I even cut out meat and dairy. I'm not saying that everyone has to. I'm just saying I did. Yeah. And, um, and all I ate was fresh fruits and vegetables, um, soups and juicing. And I really feel like it's made a massive, massive yeah. difference. And your so, energy is very good. I yeah. Can, yeah. Yeah. And I, I don't know, I just, I feel a lot fresher and my mind feels clearer. And when mm-hmm. I'm up in the morning, I'm up and you know, it's, um, you feel better. You know, it's, we remember last week we talked about building materials. Mm-hmm. Um, if you've got nice copper plated door handles. Right. Yeah, yeah, they're brass, but anyway. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, if you've got good foundations, if you've got good materials built in your house, you know that's what we're making our body out of. Yeah. So the better those materials, the more access you have. Say you're trying to build the house, uh, but the lumber yard is only supplying you with one plank of wood mm-hmm. a week. Mm-hmm. Then it's going to take a very long time to build the house. Then you're just going to get cold, and the house will probably fall down. Right. So. Um, so if you have a constant good supply of nutrients and minerals, then you know, you're, going to, you're going to see the benefits from that. And last week we talked about, uh, in particular, vitamin A. And we talked about uh, two other compounds, lutein and zeaxanthin, which are the, the two, two latter are still are found in the macula. Mm-hmm. So that's why we emphasize those. And the vitamin A, we were saying, really helps with the phototransduction, which right. is the vision process of turning light into electricity, so it then goes to the brain. So a good source of this is beta carotene. Now, um, the old wives' tale of uh, the pilots in World War II eating carrots to help their vision uh, be better at night so they could fly wasn't just uh, a myth to help encourage people to grow more vegetables. It does actually help with the process of phototransduction and is a fantastic source of vitamin A. So just like uh, beta carotene, you can think of carrots. And when you think of carrots, you can think of orange. And the carotene is actually what gives it that bright color. So that's what makes it orange. So that's what makes a red pepper, gives it its red. That's what gives a tomato its red. So uh, even with yellow peppers, you know, anything that is brightly colored, you know you're getting that beta carotene. So what you can think of when you're planning your salads or when you're planning your meals, try and think of colorful food. Mm -hmm. So when you look at your plate, does it look colorful? Mm -hmm. Last week we talked about the McDonald's uh, with a hamburger and fries. Not too much color. No. Just brown and white. Yeah, and a bit of yellow. The tomatoes probably died or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, bleached. Yeah. Well, they colour it in in the back. Exactly. With, yeah. with a colouring pen. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so try and think colourful when you want beta carotene, and with that good uh, source of vitamin A. Yeah, and so for the lutein and zeaxanthin, think green. So um, greens, any kind of greens mm-hmm. that you can get into your diet. In particular, we like to highlight collard greens. Kale, Swiss chard, and spinach are very high in the in those chemicals. Yeah, I think they're. Um, I suppose all greens. I think I've heard some people say dark greens. Right. Um, certainly, people say kale is a superfood. And but, you know, more so than superfood. But I yeah. think they're all. I mean, they're all up there. Yeah, more so than say iceberg lettuce, I guess. Yeah. You know, yeah. whiter, whiter green yeah. foods. Yeah. And what's interesting is something like Swiss chard is you can get yellow Swiss chard. So you're right. getting the beta carotene and the ah. lutein in one meal. Yeah. And one thing that I was amazed with when I was shopping here in the farmers market and saw carrots uh-huh. with the uh, with the leaves. Yeah. On it, right. With yeah. The, so nature has created it's the true. beta carotene and the lutein. It's true. In one, all in one go. It's genius. Really. Yeah. Or like I, I love cooking beet greens. So you just get the beet greens. Yeah. You cook the cook the greens for dinner. And then you juice the beets in the morning for your juice. So 
So certainly looking um, for these, these different varieties, um, you're trying to get the, the greens with the colours in your diet as much as possible is going to help promote these micronutrients, which is going to help promote these vitamins and minerals. It's really going to help start improving your eyesight. Now, one thing we will say is that although we're highlighting those, uh, those vitamins or vitamins, is, is not necessarily separating it out, but having an overall... Right you know, diet of all vitamins and minerals. And even though, you know, um, pharmaceutical companies and doctors are separating them out, mm -hmm. I still think that there is a connection between all of them. You know, there's a, a right. unity there between all these vitamins and minerals. And, yeah. and to think you could just separate one and just have that one. Yeah, that it does seem to be sort of a knee-jerk reaction in our, or in our culture to just sort of, uh, well, the modern culture in general, to say, oh, I need that, so where's the pill that contains yeah. that so um and you know with a lot of these fresh fruits and and vegetables you're guaranteed to get everything yeah um and we're not necessarily talking about um taking uh, tablets here but just in general that if you get have a, a well-balanced diet then you don't have to stress about oh am i getting enough vitamin a oh am i getting enough beta carotene am i getting enough right. lutein you, as long as you're just eating healthy, mm -hmm. you're getting that anyway. All right. So let's talk about what eating healthy is in general to us. Then. Yeah. I mean, we're sort of, um, I mean, we're inundated with this. We're, we're going through a, a generation here of uh, the highest obesity levels and more people dying of coronary heart disease than they are of lung cancer. Uh, we're also in the first time ever that there's a chance that our next generation is going to live shorter than the oh, current I hadn't generation. Heard that. I hadn't heard that. And that's never happened before. Wow. So obviously, you know, with the increase in medicine and everything else and, and better lifestyles, the next generation has always lived longer. Right. Well, but for the first time, it's not, it's wow. not working that wow. way anymore. For huh. the first time, the that parents says something. Yeah, are going to live longer than the children. Wow. So, you know, this is, this is a real serious issue here. We are facing an epidemic. Um, but in particular, and I'm sure most people that are listening to this are already seeking a healthy lifestyle. You right. know, if you're interested in, in healthy vision, there's a good chance that, you know, you're interested in nutrition and, and exercise and what have you. But in particular here, um, we're talking about good health that's going to help with vision and also self-healing in general. So, I mean, for me personally, and I'm sure you feel the same, Richard, is that trying to get a large portion of your diet is fruits and vegetables. Right. Because if you think about it at the moment, I think they recommend like 60% carbohydrates. Um, I don't know what the rest is, like 30% protein, right? 20% vitamins and minerals. Um, and really it should be the other way around. Right. Ideally. Um, because with those, you know, fresh fruits, vegetables, you're getting all the micronutrients, which is all the, you know, the, the tiny things that really make our body work. Mm -hmm. And the carbohydrates is more about energy. And sure enough, you need that, but you can get that in yeah. fruits and vegetables. Right. And it's almost like a, it's almost like a misunderstanding. You know, we're, we're, we're desperate trying to find carbohydrates. You know, we need energy. We need energy. Energy. Yeah. Give yeah. Me, uh, you know, give me, but then saying that, you know, my, uh, fiance's uh, grandfather um, lived to the age of 96 uh -huh. and was brought up on uh, meat veg and potatoes mm -hmm. um, but I guess he was with that there was no processed food right right and I think I think this is what we need to be aware of is in the last 20 years or so we need to be aware of what's being introduced into our diet without even without us even really noticing but how yeah. it's affecting us. Well, an interesting analogy in this new house that I just moved into, a brand new kitchen, which I love, there's this pantry, you know, this door with oh, yeah. multiple shelves, right? <laughs> and I'm just like, what am I going to put in there? I don't, I don't <laughs> buy canned vegetables. I don't uh, yeah. canned fruits. I don't buy any muffin mixes, you know, and none of this <laughs> stuff do I buy. Yeah. I, I'm like, what can I put in there? Toilet paper? I don't know. What, <laughs> what am I going to put in there? Don't eat that. <laughs> and this is 100%. I bring organic, right? Organic. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, you're right. We, I mean, because I, I even went, when we were planning this podcast, um, I thought it was important that we also talk about checking the back 
for nutritional value. Right, right, right. But I, I thought the other day, we don't ever really do that. And it's because we buy a lot of our stuff fresh. Yeah. Uh, we're very lucky here in San Francisco. We, we've got umpteen farmers markets right. and there's a big push, you know, the organic revolution here in San Francisco. Um, so we really can go to a farmer's market, buy it straight from the farmer, organic, not overly priced, and we've got there's, our fruit and vegetables. And there's no label to read other than yeah. Yeah, whether it's organic <laughs> or not, basically, or what kind of plum it is or something like that. And even then, we're quite lucky we have places like Whole Foods and Trader Joe's, which mm-hmm. even if we can't make it to the farmer's market, then they're, you know, they're supermarkets that promote organic produce. It's not 100%. But they they do promote it. Right. But the thing with reading the labels is you'll start to notice, in particular, you want to look for the saturated fat content uh, where it says fat. Then underneath it will say unsaturated, saturated. Saturated is is the big one. Uh, You also want to look at the salt content. You know, we Mm -hmm. really get too much salt in our diet. Uh, We really don't need to add any more than we need to. And if you notice a lot of the canned food really does have high quantities of salt or as Mm -hmm. it will say on the back sodium Mm -hmm. Um, but ideally if you can start pushing towards more fresh fruits more fresh vegetables um, see if you can fit a salad or two in a week see if you can see it as a challenge see if you can start to discover recipes that involve not necessarily heavily cooking food or just something fresh and the reason why we say that as there is some research that lends towards right. at getting more nutrients from your food if you don't cook it. Right. And then there's some people who say yeah, that so you, you need it a little it. bit cooked in order to process <laughs> yeah. it. So that you get both yeah. sides of that. So we're going to be on the fence. The only thing I can say with when it's fresh, the, the idea that I like not cooked is that it's still full of oxygen. Yeah. And you get that rich oxygen in your blood right. that you don't might not necessarily get so i like that idea of, right. of eating those those fresh i think it, co- it may come down to if you can take it it's sort of like some people's digestion can't take so a solid raw diet yeah so. i mean it's but the, i think the thing here is just like the ex the eye exercises is not to say i'm going to become yeah. a vegan i'm going to become a raw foodist i mean right. it'd be great if you did but the thing is, is people go, oh, I can't. I can't just eat raw food. So oh, they don't right, eat any right. of it, right? You're so, right. They don't even try. Yes. Yeah, so the thing is, is okay, can I work uh, one salad in a week? Can right. I, you know, just, just like the eye exercises, mm-hmm. just start it off steady and start working it in. Um, and this, of course, just it goes beyond eye exercises. It goes beyond vision. It's, you know, it's it's really promoting longevity and and a better life i think um i think they say that if you can get the right amount of fruits and veg in your diet then you can halve your chances of getting cancer just yeah just by you know getting the right nutrients and and having a good immune system Mm -hmm. so um but certainly when you have these diets then you will notice that it's gonna help clear up your vision a little bit uh we had a client once that came to us with with floaters and he said that he stopped drinking and, and eating meat and processed foods because he noticed that the floaters increased and his vision became foggier. Um, and that when makes he, sense. when he sort of ate fresh fruit and vegetables, his, vis- his vision became clearer and he really noticed that. Yeah. Okay, great. So uh, a very brief discussion there. Obviously, diet is, is such a, a big topic that we can go through, but we just wanted to touch base um, because unfortunately a lot of this information isn't as accessible as it should be and, and sometimes I don't know, you're sort of bored to death they talk about your five fruit and vegetables a day yeah. and you know excuse the pun it's shoved down your throat but the idea is instead of you know thinking of it necessarily like that just think of it as an overall healthy diet that's going to help uh, improve your body improve your mind and also improve your vision so I think it's about a good time to move over to question of the week And the question of the week this week comes from one of our uh, listeners who happens to have the same thing that Will does, uh, retinitis pigmentosa. So he approached this question kind of from the position of maybe there's something about RP that's doing this. And all he asked was, uh, at night I look centrally at an object and I don't see it as well. And then I turn my head and I look at it peripherally and I see it better. 
And I think he was actually like, just what's going on here? Yeah. And uh, the answer is actually fairly straightforward. Uh, Excuse that, the pun. Yes. <laughs> well, it's <laughs> also peripherally to <laughs> Is that um, that's the way you're supposed to see. Yeah. 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 So we see um, well, the story that springs to mind for me is the um, astrologers, when they were looking at the stars at night, they noticed that they could st- see the stars better if they didn't look directly ah, at the stars. Yeah. Could, so that's how they would sort of map the the stars ah, I never through, heard that that's great through looking at the side and not looking directly at them because if you look directly at them then they tend to, to the, disappear and that is because the cones are what you're using when you're looking directly at an object and the cones uh, need much more light mm-hmm. than the peripheral cells which are your rods yeah that's interesting maybe I <laughs> maybe, I, maybe I, it's like I'm, I'm beginning <laughs> to think I never have trouble seeing stars at night and maybe that's because I'm, all, I'm often is, looking yeah. at them peripherally. Yeah. 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 Huh. And I think you might be able to see the brighter ones with your central vision. Okay. Certainly the, the darker ones. Um, the darker ones. The ones that aren't <laughs> as bright. Right. You're, you know, you're not going to see as well. You're going to need to see those in your periphery. Um, mm. Because, you know, it's the periphery that picks up those low-level lights. Yeah. What is it? It's a candle... It's one candle at one mile or something? Or is it eight yeah. miles? It's one of those miles. I think it's a mile, like a candle at one we've mile. Been, we've been on holiday. So <laughs> we can't remember that. One, uh, one photon. One photon of light. Oh, one photon, yes. So you need to, to, to wake up those, to right. trigger those cells. Which is a candle at some distance. I think yeah. it's a mile. Um, so, yeah, so that's the way to think of it, that at nighttime you're really seeing with the periphery, which is why if you have something like retinitis pigmentosa, that you get something like night blindness, meaning mm-hmm. that you can't see that well in the dark um, because those cells aren't functioning as well. Right. So we hope you've enjoyed the podcast this week. We've certainly missed the last couple of weeks doing these podcasts and we look forward to delivering you another fantastic podcast next week on uh, how this nutrition and how you can take it a little bit step further to start helping the body and start helping your vision. If you want to find out a little bit more about eye exercises, then head over to our website at envisionselfhealing.com where you will find a free ebook there that you can download that takes you through some of the very basics of eye exercises and explains a little bit on how indeed they can improve your eyesight. You can also head over to our Facebook fan page and you'll see some pictures there. I put up some of, uh, of the healthy eating that we've been doing over this week. And uh, we also answer some questions over there from our audience and uh, help build a little bit more of a community over there. (laughs) You can also check us both out on Twitter. And uh, certainly if you're listening to this on YouTube, then subscribe to our channel and you'll get one of these uh, podcasts that we do every week sent to you. And indeed, if you're listening to this on iTunes, then you can subscribe as well. And then that way you can uh, save yourself a little bit of time and have these podcasts sent directly to you. So, good luck with your eye exercises this week, and happy healing. And have a good week.